right, yeah, cut the music. It's it, it it's over. I'm not at a show. What are you doing? But you know what? That's all right. I'm I'm the GM. I can do whatever the hell I want. But Lawrence's approval and everything. Anyway, YouTubers, wrestlers, welcome to a very special edition of MSW Weekly Update. Your host. The Clinic. No, I'm just kidding. It's the criminal here, the MSW television champion. And I'm here to give you the news that everybody out there uh, wants to hear of what's happened already and what's about to happen in the future. So anyway, to kick things off this evening, we're going to go ahead and run down Starcade. 2012, The Brink of Extinction. This show definitely showed uh, the world that we have talent in the backyard. Definitely showed that we have some up and coming stars. Definitely showed um, that the, how can I say it, the cane walkers still got it. We do it all back here in MSWGWA, and we will do it again. And this year, it's going to be an amazing rundown. Trust me this, guys. Anyway, let's get to the Star Key. 2012, the brink of extinction. The first match that took place at Star Key 2012 was a tag team match. Advocate Incorporated wind up facing Sweet and Low. For the tag team belt. Great match. Advocate Incorporated. They have been in there for a while. But Sweet and Low. All the way. From back. Uh, I think it's the Big Bang. Yeah it's the Big Bang guys. Look I did it right. I read up on my history. So anyway. Advocate Incorporated. Sweet and Low. At it for the first time ever, Starcade 2012. Who wins? The Underdogs Advocate Incorporated. They take the win, they're flaunting it all of a sudden. All of a sudden, something happens. A theme song kicks on. Eyes turn, pants become wet. Drake Cornish is walking out. Drake Cornish, my friends, says he still has a rematch clause for the tag team belts. So you know what he does? He grabs Lawrence Alfred by the hand and he takes him out on a date for a medium-sized Diet Coke advocate. And a large whopper, Mr. Terror, took him on a date. Guess who gets the belts? Who runs off as the real Woo. tag team champions? Drake and Lawrence Alfred. Victorious. Now where this is going to go, it even shocked me, the criminal who has a mind of a thousand moves, of a thousand ways to, let's just get down to the basics. Fuck you up. So anyway, anyway, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next match. The TLC match. Oh my goodness gracious. We got bunch of stars facing one-on-one -on -one TLC, tender love and care, tables, ladders, and chairs. We have Aaron Ryan, Derek Knight, Double X, Kung Fu Jack himself, Little Lace, Ozzy Lyons, and the criminal. Uh, all in this TLC match to take the belt away from, let's see what his name is, Ian the Crotch, what is it called? Ian Day. Ian Day? Ninja. Ian Day? Yeah. Pretty freaking gay. Anyway, 
That's what I say. Mm -hmm. Let's go eat some hay by the bay. Anyway, <coughs> American Ninja is his, I guess, uh, you know, name, I guess you can say. He walks in there. He's the champ. The belt is raised up high on a three-inch nail, nailed to maybe, I don't know, like a three-quarter inch plywood. I don't know, depending on where you get it from. You get it from Lowe's. It might be three-quarter. You get it from that. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The one thing that all of these guys got in common is that they're all going for the gold. All trying to put the ladder, taking the steps up for the championship belt. The MSW World Television Championship. The match was amazing. I was in it. That's why it was amazing. Because I was in it. Like I said. I didn't say it, but I'm, I'm about to say it. Criminal is whoop ass, all right? All of a sudden, I just had this nerve to do something. And I always wanted to do it, so when I came back, I said, hell, why not do it? Stone Cold Stunner, one, two, three, four. Hold on. All of a sudden, Aaron Rock. Aaron Ryan, with the clinic that came out with him, he starts getting, he almost got one on me. He, he gets up to the top rope, gets up to the top rope, clinic joins him, tells him to do something, but the clinic puts a woo right on the Aaron Ryan. And clinical depression from the top rope. Nobody saw it coming. The camera swings around. Derek Knight is doing his signature kick. I don't know if I did that right, but I did it pretty sweet. I ducked it. And I got up and I stunned the hell out of him. I stumbled out of that ring. Climbed up what I thought was the tallest ladder in my life but I did it I grabbed the gold and I walked out in this W world television channel enough about me on to the next match ah this one had some controversy in it it was uh, kind of more like an absence as you can say Mr. Terror was scheduled to fight Eternal Darkness at Starcade. Now, all of a sudden, calls come to calls, checking up Facebook, we're checking everything, Eternal Darkness is nowhere to be found. He's not coming. But we gotta find Mr. Terror someone to fight. So who better to give Mr. Terror someone to fight but then Eternal Darkness' friend, the kid. The kid flew all the way from Las Vegas for this. Just to show what Eternal Darkness is all about. The kid and Mr. Terror, they get in there and they start going off. The kid starts it off with a big wow. Lawrence Alfred slapping the face. Wrong move on the kid's part. Tara starts marshing him. Just saying, to the big, he like, like this, you know what I'm saying? Just saying, it's like, bam. So, anyway, back to the task at hand. Mr. Tara, it's, it's looking good. It's looking good for Tara. It, all of a sudden, it's looking good for kid. All of a sudden, it's looking good for Tara. Back and forth, back and forth match. Where in the hell did that chair come from? BAM! The kid hits Mr. Terror over the head with the chair. Mr. Terror wins by DQ. Only by DQ. And if I, if I remember it right, I think Lawrence Alfred and Derek Knight. Could this mean something for Mr. Terror in the future of 
MSW and GWA in the year of 2015. We'll never know. A lot of stuff happens in Lawrence's mind. The kid's always going to Las Vegas, and Derek Knight, his spirit is always with us. Watch the scoop slimeries. Just watch the scoop slimeries. His soul was there with him. His spirit was. It's actually he's right here. I have to look back. Anyway, that's just done. Mr. Terror gets the win, but only by DQ. Starcade 2012, the breakout of Extinction, rolls on into a Hall of Famer match. Now, the Scoop Slimies and uh, the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony was done uh, the night before. Then we had, I think it was, uh, we had. Two of them went in. One of them finally got their award, though, from a long time ago. Kung Fu Jack got his award. Then the kid and Derek Knight, bless the spirit, Derek Knight, they were inducted into the Hall of Fame. So you know what, Lawrence? Alfred the Grey Mon thought it would be a great thing to do to have a Hall of Fame match with all these Hall of Famers in the match. Somehow, some way, they were in the match. The Phenomenal Angels, Derek Knight and the Kid, the two, the class of 2012 Hall of Famers, faced off Lawrence and the Clinton. This is a weird team to see, but, you know, a great team to think about because you have Lawrence, Clinton, they've been there from the beginning, they know what it's all about, but you also have the Phenomenal Angels that were brought up by Lawrence. So, uh, anyway, we're going to go on with this. The referee, the referee, get this, Kung Fu Jack, oh, oh, oh my god. I actually think that Kung Fu Jack went for a beer break in that match. I'm not sure if he did, but I think he got a beer break in there. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, match is going on. Classic tag team Classic tag team match, and that's what this match was all about. It was Hall of Famers, classic tradition, united, everything like that. Phenomenal Angels go over with a win. Ooh. Didn't see it coming though. I seriously doubted that the Angels were going to win because of what Lawrence does in the ring, what Clinic does in the ring. Both. Phenomenal, I guess you can say. But the Phenomenal Angels got the win over Lawrence Alfred and the Clinic. Now, this next, the next match. This match right here, guys. I can't think of any words to describe it. But I'm going to use one, and I'm, and I'm going to quote halfway the Miz. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. It was amazing. Amazing. I can't just express how much this match was. I mean, if you were there in person, you know how how how's that saying? You can cut the the uh, tension with a knife. I believe. My goodness, it was amazing. You had the MSW champion, J E W T Jet, versus. Ozzy Lines. This feud has been going on for a long time. It's time to end it. It's time to settle the score. Or like when Ozzy Lines said in his promo right before the match, it's time to snuff the bleepity bleep rooster. The bleepity bleep rooster. Suck on that. So, they go into this match. Ozzy does not even wait. Does not even wait when that bell is rung. I don't, I don't remember if it, it, the bell even rung. It don't matter. All you heard was the lion's roar. All you heard was the lion's roar. And the match was off. Back and forth, back and forth. Jets beating down Ozzy Lions. And Ozzy Lions beating out of them. We had... What, what was it? A reverse tombstone power driver? Was it reversed or 
You know what? It doesn't matter if it was reversed. It hurts. And he did it on the top ropes. Oh my God, the carnage. The carnage that was going on in that match. When all seemed well, when all seemed well, and J-E-L-O-T was pain free, stuff was about to be keep on going on the same for him. Lawrence Alfred comes out of nowhere and talks to the special guest referee Lil Ace. Talks to him. Lawrence reaching inside his pocket for something pulls out what seems to be a chain, throw, throws it what we all thought was intended for J-E-double-T. Ozzy Lyons intercepts it, grabs it, and knocks J-E-double-T out. Ref didn't see it, though. He didn't get him. He didn't get him, though. He didn't get him. That's the thing. He didn't get him. All right? Ozzy Lyons... One, two, three. New MSW champion, Ozzy Lyons. But ladies and gentlemen, yes, Ozzy Lyons walked out the champ. But that was only the beginning. Lawrence Alfred comes out, puts a foot on Jet's chest. And he starts giving him the truth. Starts giving him the word. Jet is fired from his GM spot, and the GM spot is given to me, the criminal. Lawrence Alfred calls out, well, there's a rumor going around that, did Lawrence accidentally reform Catalyst, or is it just a coincidence? I'm not sure, but what I'm saying is that most of the people were from that group. That amazing group that I was in, because I was in it, that's why, because it was amazing. And Jet has the whole world on top of him. And there's no way that he can keep it up. What will Jet do? We'll see. Then finally, for the GW World Backyard Wrestling Championship, the Advocate versus Clinic. Advocate versus Clinic. You're going to edit this out, Aaron. You're going to edit this out when I say Advocate versus Clinic. We're going to go back to this. There was a triple threat match afterwards. This involved Aaron Riot. Aaron Riot. An up-and-coming star in MSW and GWA today. Aaron Ryan. He had a lot to prove at Starcade going against Lawrence Alfred. But not so much another opponent that was in the match. The Raps. I don't like the kid. I don't like him. I mean, he's freaking stupid. Who comes into a match doing this? A stupid, idiotic, smells like butterfingers mixed with dog dookie kid. Just saying. So in my belief, and I'm going to do this because Fox News does this. They put in their own beliefs. You know, Fox News. Don't sue me. I'm the opinion guy, okay? I believe this match was just Aaron and Lawrence. That's what I believe. But Barabbas was in there swinging his fist like a an ass. Okay? But Aaron showed what he could do in the ring when he's faced with a legend, Lawrence. Alfred, he showed what he can do. He can beat Barabbas up, and he can beat Lawrence Alfred up. If he can do that, who knows what he can do. But, lo and behold, 
the older dog gets the treat as Lawrence Alfred goes over in this match. Lawrence Alfred goes over. Is it done? Or is there more to come? GWA World Backyard Wrestling Championship match. The clinic, the owner of this title, faces the advocate. The advocate has pushed long and hard for this. He has waited for his chance to finally grip the gold. Does he win it? Does he win it? They go in. Clint. All that. Bam. Oh my god. GWA crowns a new champion. The yet. The clinic. He shocked. But he respects. But he shocked. Definitely spit was coming out of his mouth. Just saying, guys. Suffering Thuckatad. The advocate is the new. DWA World Becker with the tip. Did it spit on you? Are you you're cool? How far is my spit range? Alright, so you're okay. So Advocate walks out Starcade, the new GWA World Backyard Wrestling Champion, and Starcade ends in a big bang with every title changing hands. First in history. Now, Starcade is done. Starcade is done. Now, there's always one or something is going to happen. So, you know what happened? Lawrence Alfred's birthday bash. Lawrence Alfred turned um, assistant. How old is Lawrence Alfred turn? Hmm. How, how old is Lawrence Alfred now? 29. Lawrence Alfred is 29. So he's he got what like twenty two years of Close, yeah. yeah, about over twenty years of uh, wrestling under his belt. So you know what? This show was about him, but also he said, "Why not just throw it straight into the roster? Why not just do it? Why not just a birthday? Make it a birthday." Birthday Bash, Lawrence Alfred. But this is where Lawrence comes in. Lawrence is known for taking companies, going, Hey, what's going on, buddy? You have any doubts that you have? Elbow drop. Yeah. Right, right on top of his head. All right? And he takes the company. So would Lawrence Alfred does, he says, UWA, UWA is another faction of ours, but we're taking it, we're merging it into MSW and GWA. So, one more last match for each title, just to do it, one last time. Lawrence Alfred goes after Mr. Terror. Mr. Terror was a UWA World Heavyweight Champion. So, they two collide. Go at it. Lawrence finds a way. Lawrence finds a way to bring the big guy down. I think he put a sawhorse on top of Terror after he speared him off the top rope. He speared him off. That's amazing. I think the ground shook. It did. It did. It did shake, didn't it? Dog, you bastard. <laughs> so Lawrence Alfred walks out UWA champ. UWA champ. The last UWA champion in UWA history. Which is about to be, uh, just like, cut. <laughs> Peace, Tony, messed up. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Now. Ozzy was scheduled to face Jet. Jet comes out, looks like he's ready for the match, grabs the mic, 
and starts talking. Well, Ozzelines is not 100% because he got in a car wreck and he's still trying to heal from the match that he had with him. Legitimate. But then Ozzy Lyons comes out. Ozzy Lyons comes out and he says straight to Jess Pace, he says, I am 110%. He says, if you don't want to fight me, get out of my den. That's what he says. And Jet's like, I just want to let you know that if I don't get what I want, being Ozzy Lyons, I guess, I'm going to go through one of Lawrence's boys every show. Everyone avoids the signs. We'll get back to that. So Ozzy is left with no opponent. So as a nice GM I am, as a nice GM I am, I come out and I say, Ozzy Lines, you want a match? I'll give you a match. Hey, you. Come over here. Ooh. Mr. Terror facing Ozzy Lines. Ozzy Lines being the X-Division champ. Facing Mr. Terror. Mr. Terror is a big guy. He doesn't need a weapon to win. He doesn't need it. He's like a chair and a table and a truck. Well, yeah, he's a ladder. But it's, it's hard to climb up with, you know. He doesn't have the steps. Size, yeah. He doesn't have the steps. I mean, maybe if he, like, locked hands, but that's cool. Anyway, so Terror's facing Ozzy. Terror goes over. Ozzy says, you know, that's cool. That, that's cool because I am still the MSW World Heavyweight Champion. That's fine. I have to face Mr. Terror to unify the belt. What does a criminal have in his mind if he picked the opponent? Oh, my mind is a, it's a great, great technical, logical invention. If you say it's the best thing I was ever invented on her. Anyway, clinic and advocate go at it again for the GW World Backdoor Wrestling League Championship. You want to know why? Because of a little tiny, itty mess up. If you look at the footage on Starcade, when Advocate pins the clinic, the clinic's shoulder is just a little too high off the ground. Just a little bit too high. Just high enough to say, should have never been pinned. So, clinic and Advocate go at it again. Advocate says, I'm not going to go down in history as a dirty pinning fool. No mess ups this time. I think even in, in, in the match, the ref started to do the count and clinics shoulder w was up. Advocate got up and said, No. No. You don't. What? You don't get. What? Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so Advocate goes over against Clinic, kind of renewing his championship reign. Saying that, you know, my championship belt is not done over a mess up. Now, what did I do? I don't know. What did he do? I don't know. What? But Aaron, criminal, in a grudge match. What did I do? I don't understand what I did. I won his riot match. I won the riot match. Wow. Wow. Why are you so mad about it, bro? What you mad? You you mad, bro? Are you? Apparently, he is mad. Okay? Then, I, I don't know if it was like uh, the TLC match. I don't know, because he didn't get to get me, because he didn't get me. I don't know if he's like mad. He should be mad at clinic, clinic, clinical depression. That's cool. That's cool. You know what? Just because you hate me, I hate you. Okay. Fine. 
Grudge match go, goes on. Harry and Ryan really does hate me. Because, uh, he beat the shit out of me a little bit. But, you know, the criminals always get the best out of them. Oh, right in the nets. <laughs> Stick a finger up his butt. Just the way, just the way I like it. And, uh, just when Advocate thinks everything's okay, he swings me against the ropes. I don't know, he might have went going for a clothesline or a ride show, I'm not sure. Pulled a fast one on him. Pulled the executioner. One, two, three. I go over the top. Diet Coke bash. Butterfinger flash. And I'm done. Oh. Think about a butterfinger bash. Stuck my finger right in his face. So, mm, bet you every time he watches that footage, he must cry just a little bit. And maybe pee a little bit. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's go on. The Intercontinental Belt. They decided to host a Royal Rumble for this. Royal Rumble with who, you ask? Oh, my goodness. What a weird and great group of guys. You got. Dynamite. What's the name of the game? Football. What's the name? Which is a great song, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a fan of him. I'm actually a fan of that guy. That guy's actually probably like one of my favorite guys in the backstory. Like, you know, like my, my worst, my least favorite right now would have to be Aaron Ryan. But one of my most favorites is that, that dude right there. <laughs> He, he, he's cool. He's cool. I like him. Oh, so, you got Dynamite, Derek Knight, Skittles. You got X. Wasn't he like Advocate? Oh, Advocate was X. But apparently, that's not Advocate anymore. It's X. I don't know, dude. He sucked in that match, though. Yeah, well, yeah, he sucked in that match. But, uh,. Then we have Kung Fu Jack, which was, you know, that was a match where you actually got to see him go down. Like, get down on the mat and start doing it. And then you got Kinnick, when it comes in and suffer duck at ass. Give me a hill. Yeah. And, uh, and they go off. It's an over the top rope elimination. Uh, I think the first one to go out was X. X was the first one to go out. Dynamite, I think he over celebrated that. And did some and then he got kicked kicked in the face and like thrown over, but that's cool, I still love him. And he he ran in the back and was like, oh man, man. it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So um then it was down to Comfort Jack Knight and the clinic. This is weird. They start going at at it, and what it looks like Clinic gets Kung Fu Jack out, but Derek Knight tries to go for something on the clinic, but accidentally eliminates himself, leaving Clinic the Intercontinental Champion. Kick out from the champion. So Clinic has gold on him once again. It's like it's like go to track soon or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, he can shine that go to all that spitty guy. So. Just like buffering, <laughs> buffer that out real, real quick. So, uh, but then clinic decides to say something. Clinic says, "I want a match." What? I want a match. What? I want a match. What? Against Kung Fu Jack. What? For the Intercontinental Championship. Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, that, was, that was actually pretty cool. We should try that sometime. But yeah, Clinic wants a match against Kung Fu Jack, uh, defending his Intercontinental Belt. Don't know when this is gonna happen. You know, I'm not straight up into upper management, but I, 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 I'll get there. So anyway, Lawrence Alfred, you know what he loves? War games. War games starts. Uh, we have a promo with Team Advocate come out. 
dare unite. His spirit wasn't there, but he was there. So he was able to get his uh, his plaque for his Hall of Fame award, which was actually pretty cool. And, uh, you know, they, they talked the crap. And, uh, and Team Advocate, it was Terror, Advocate, Knight, and Clinic. And uh, it was a great team, all great guys. But you have to admit, Team Lawrence was pretty cool. Because I was in it. And uh, you had Lawrence, Ozzy, Kung Fu Jack, and me. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, while we're cutting our promo and we're talking our shit about them, all of a sudden you can hear off in the distance like someone's getting beat up. We run over. The whole locker room runs. Jet is in what looks to be like a cage of some sort attacking Derek Knight. Now, he kind of holds him for a hostage a bit. We get the gate, open up. He brings him out, tell, tells us to back up, off, and it runs. He's, he's gone. He's gone. So what do we do now? Now Knight's not there to battle with the, the last match for War Damage. So that means that you got only three people on Team Advocate, and four people on Team Lawrence. So if Team Advocate could pull one out of uh, Terror's ass, and uh, I mean, because only something that big can come out of Terror's ass. So, uh, <laughs> so we go in there. Uh, it starts off criminal one advocate, uh, advocate team. They win the flip, the coin flip. So they get to go first. Clinic advocate me. Then next guy comes in, the Tom Limit, blah, blah, blah. Kung Fu Jack comes in. Then on them, I think it was Terror came in. Terror came in. So it's Terror, Clinic, Advocate against me and Kung Fu Jack. Then Ozzy Lyons comes out. Then, uh, hmm, where Lawrence didn't come out. Lawrence came, he came, he came out, yeah. Lawrence came out. And stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, what in the world is going on? Garrett Knight walks out, ready to fight, walks up to the camera and says, Jed, you have awakened me. Jumped inside the match and started messing up Team Lawrence to the fullest degree. Hey, you can't you can't keep him down. But when all comes in, only once they get the limelight, are the people that win. Team Lawrence wins, me, Kung Fu Jack, Ozzy Lawrence, and Lawrence. We go over the top, we're celebrating, we have, have, we're having a great time. Well, Derek Knight is in the ring, all of a sudden Jet shows up inside the ring. Jet tells Derek, hey, look right here, RKO, a cheap shot from the J-E-double-T on Derek Knight. We'll highlight real. Like, what does Jet have to prove? He wants Ozzy Lyons. He can have him just as he's going through all of Lawrence's bullets. I don't understand it. He could be attacking Ozzy Lyons behind the scenes. There's nothing wrong with a little street fight. Hell, in this W television champion, 24 hour rule, I've been attacked, what, once? No, once? I thought I was attacked. I was attacked twice. Yeah, I was attacked twice. Oh my god. But hey, they still count. I'm the still I'm still the MSW World Television Champion. Okay, so it's cool. It's all gravy, baby. Die go fashion, butterfinger flashing, the same. Um so going out for the birthday bash ends off in a kind of an upset in some weird way. So Jet I guess he's now versus the world. So now that we're done with Sarcade and Lawrence's birthday bash, now we have the first show of the year. Uh, is it MSW or GWA? GWA in Aubrey Ball, 2013. We have uh, a UWA Intercontinental match with the Clinic and Kung Fu Jack. We have the Criminal and Terror going up. The MSW World Television Championship, it needs to unify with the X Division Championship. And then uh, you got 
Ozzy is going to be versus either Clinic or Pumpkin Jack, whoever wins the first match with the UWA Intercontinental Championship. And the MSW World Heavyweight Championship will uh, combine with uh, the Intercontinental Championship. If I'm, uh, yeah, that one's combined. There, those are un unified? Okay. You can right there, and then the GWA uh, World Back Wrestling Champion will, uh, the advocate will have to face Lawrence because Lawrence has the UWA uh, World uh, Heavyweight Championship belt at this time. So that has to be unified. This is all come to show. Um, that will be on January 20th at the Terra Dome. Uh, if you want to come, just hit uh, MSW or GWA up on Facebook, uh, figure out how you can get there, uh, find your transportation, or you never know, maybe you might get a special visit by one of the wrestlers themselves, and they'll pick you up, they'll bring you to the show, because we're all nice guys over here, most of us, but uh, anyway, this has been a very special edition of uh, the MSW Weekly Update. We'll see y'all at an inaugural ball 2013. Y'all have a great night. Cue my music, please. The top drive side. I'm just... Get, 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 wait, wait, get, get off.